witches hi hello and welcome back we are here we have a new episode for you and this one is all about litha or midsummer in certain parts of the world <laughs> god it looks like a fucking fire's going off in my house well at least it smells good right <laughs> yeah I just I got some new incense and I they I couldn't find the shorter version of the dragon's blood incense and so I was like do you have any incense that's dragon blood and they're like sorry we only have the like really really gigantically long ones <laughs> and I was like all right I'm gonna take it because it's only like three bucks for this whole thing I was like fuck yeah I'm gonna take it this is pretty cheap here and then she's like now do you need like an equally as long uh incense holder and it was like homemade like little long brown wooden stick and i was like no i don't have room for that i have something i can use and it was in fact not long enough so now i have to jimmy rig it to make it work <laughs> That's fine. I love that. I super need you to take a picture of that for the people that don't watch the YouTube. Here you go. Oh, you want me to take a picture? Oh, well, I can take a picture. Too. <laughs> Selfie. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, bring it back. <laughs> Fix your face. <laughs> That's what Fix I do. Fix your face. <laughs> I was smiling. <laughs> you were doing a, a weird smile. I was uh, doing like a Vanna White. <laughs> Fix your face. Fix your literally, attitude, Brandy. Literally. Okay, I don't have children, but I have tons of children at school. If you need your kid to smile in a picture, tell them to fix their face. They will laugh and you could take the picture real fast. I promise. It works every time. <laughs> And the nice Apparently thing about iPhones, adults, but <laughs> no, not not adults with like an attitude. I just he like that's fucking rude. Uh, <clears throat> nice thing about iPhones too is it's got that motion, <laughs> so it takes like eight different shots in one, so you can choose the best one without you know overdoing it. Um. <laughs> uh anyways okay litha um <laughs> so in old days in the old ways of celebrating this holiday they called it midsummer and the newer way of saying it or the new modernized pagan way of saying it is litha so if you're ever looking for anything that is all about midsummer you can look for litha but also look for midsummer because they're going to be basically the same it, it's the same thing it's just more modern versus archaic um but basically midsummer celebrates the beginning of summer so it's the middle of the year of the warm winters um so these traditions uh, appear to be borrowed from all kinds of cultures which is normal i mean most cultures celebrate the changing of seasons, like the heights and the lows of the season. So like Yule and the like solstices. Um, so like, celebrated Litha with hilltop bonfires and dancing. Many people attempted to jump over or through the bonfires for good luck. Um, basically, it's kind of like uh, a few of them will say that you're jumping from one season to another, like you're entering one realm into a new one by jumping over the bonfire. So that's kind of how that Kind of thing started not that that's like really a tradition but some people i mean people still jump over it for good luck but like the reason why they jump over it was because they believed xyz um and then uh, let's see other european traditions included like setting large wheels on fire and rolling them down a hill into a body of water um yeah i don't really understand that but I think they're celebrating like the wheel of the year basically is like, that's the symbol for it, I guess. I don't know. Um, whatever the case may be. But Can you imagine going to like a boat dock and just like <laughs> rolling a burning wheel down it. Let them go. <laughs> like the and then everyone's cheering the as so they like, like go by. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Can you imagine, like, the Pioneer? Private land. Right. So, like, remember the Pioneer games or, like, the Pioneer days? I don't know if your school ever had them, but, like, we had Pioneer days where we would learn all about, like, the Pioneer ways of, like, weaving baskets, uh, like, games they would play, the food they would eat, and how what they, like, dress like. Um, there was always a game where you took a stick and, like, just, like, the outside of a wagon wheel yeah um not it's not like a legitimate wheel it's literally just like a big huge circle like o ring and then you would like kick it along yeah with the stick (laughs) and see how far you could get it and like that was a game they played or like a toy that they played with that's what i'm like imagining (laughs) setting these things ablaze and just kicking them down the thing right just roll it down the thing chasing them after it (laughs) i guess you lose it that's bad luck (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um so the summer solstice or midsummer is the longest day of the year and in some traditions litha is seen um as a battle between light and dark and that's where this takes place so in this battle the oak king and the holly king battle for control now who do you think the oak king is do you think that's summer or like winter wait what <laughs> this the oak and holly <laughs> yeah oak and holly king who do you think yeah, I would is think that Oak was summer and Holly was summer. exactly no? <laughs> I was like Holly. All right, Holly, Jolly Christmas. Uh, like Holly, like deck the halls, kind of like with halls. Like, fuck no. It's <laughs> the Oak King is the winter solstice supreme. Um, the Holly King is the summer one, and well, so the solstice, yeah, right? <laughs> So the solstices is when they battle. Um, now, obviously, if you're in the winter solstice, that's when the um, hol- uh, God damn it, Oak King gets um, more powerful, and that's why he ultimately wins the battle on that day because of how um, short the day is. And with each passing day, the Holly King becomes more and more... Um, powerful which is why um the days get longer as it gets closer to summer and on midsummer or the summer solstice that's when the holly king uh wins the battle and that's when summer prevails and like the longest day of the year uh so i feel like that would make a really cool children's book I think so, too. And I am down to clown with that if there is not one made. Um, So just like Beltane, uh, Litha is known as a fire, um, like a bonfire holiday, because like fire is a huge element for Litha. Um, Bonfires are lit uh, to assist the sun as it journeyed across the sky, changing course and shortening the days. It was believed that the fairy realm was the most accessible during Midsummer Night. Um, so I know Beltane, it's like the veil thins during this time, but it thins even further during the Midsummer. Which, fun fact about that. So Shakespeare actually has a play called The Midsummer Night's Dream. And it takes place during a Midsummer celebration where uh, like fairies run amok and cause like chaos for like this group of people. And it's because the it thins the veil so much. And it's actually, I mean, it, it's kind of fun because I don't know if he was pagan or if he was, you know, Christian or whatever he was at the time of his life. But I think it's fun that he actually used like a pagan holiday, which goes to show that even if he was Christian, like there are very similar things celebrating. Yeah. We're not all that different. Hear that, Grandma? <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, and that's kind of like why the fairies come out and like run amok during the midsummer night. Um, let's see, what else was that? Oh, um, another fun fact about this is that, um, they're used to, so the full moon in June is technically called a strawberry moon. Um, I think it's probably because most strawberries are, like, grown during this time or, like, there's festivals during this time. Um, But actually, back in, like, ancient times or, like, 
obviously not modern day. Um, it used to be called the honeymoon. So the full moon in June was called the honeymoon. And um, reason being, most people actually married during June. That was a very, very big time for weddings. And that's kind of like why the honeymoon, like the time after the wedding happens, that's why it's called honeymoon because of the correlation between the full moon and like when people got married. Hmm. Um, and people, most people got married during June because it was seen as very bad luck for marriages to get married during May. Uh, because most um, of the rituals for goddesses and gods happened during May. And it was seen as bad luck because you're taken away from them to celebrate your own day kind of thing. Fun fact. Makes um, sense. Yeah. So there's that. Um, uh, so for the Celtic kind of I like idea for Litha, it was a celebration of the Celtic goddess Anu. Danu. It's D-A-N-U. Anu, I think is how they pronounce it. Uh, who represents earth and um, fruitfulness. So according to Irish mythology... Uh, the goddess was the universal mother of a tribe of ancient people in Ireland who were believed to have invaded Ireland and ruled until being defeated in war on Midsummer's Day, um, after which they retreated to the hills and eventually became the fairy folk. Hmm. So if you ever go to Ireland or anything like that, you might actually hear um, some mythological stories about this um, across the way during this time frame. Um, also, uh, to kind of bring it close to like Christianity, as Christianity swept across Europe in the early Middle Ages, Litha or Midsummer Night was adopted by the Catholic Church as St. John's Day, um, celebrating John the Baptist, as that the Catholic work. Church does. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so like even, even the Catholic Church celebrates this day one way or another, maybe not the same way, but they celebrate it. It's a saint's day. They celebrate it. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what. <laughs> um, so that's kind of like a little history about like where it started. Like there, obviously there is no, it started during this year, during this time with right. this tribe, everybody celebrates it. It's actually, um, there's different symbols in different, uh, cultures that symbolize this and i will get more to that here in a little bit when i talk about the symbols um but so for modern day pagans litha um is a day of inner power and brightness um so some people will find like a quiet spot and meditate about the light and the dark forces in their world um some others uh, those with children uh celebrate the holiday outside um, with bonfires out in the yard, whatever the case may be, in fields, doing their life. Um, and then some observers choose to observe Litha more traditionally, and they would hold a fire ritual. So this could include a large bonfire, a small one, and a fire-safe pot in one's house, but a bonfire nonetheless, or a fire nonetheless, I should say. Um, Litha is also considered a good time to practice love magic or get married. Um, again, it was the most it was the one time basically most marriages occurred um the pagan uh version of this ceremony is called hand fasting and it includes many of the same practices one might find at a wedding so some of us find that we are um less motivated to pray or meditate during the summer months um and it's not because like you're not any more I guess, spiritual during those months. It's just, why would you be inside when you could be outside doing stuff kind of thing? Like, why would you be inside at your altar when you could be outside enjoying the weather? Um, so even if you go outside and you like smell flowers or you're walking in nature, that's basically being just as spiritual as you would be at home in front of your altar. So if you're like more that outdoor person and you're feeling guilty because you're not necessarily inside with your altar like giving thanks to everything eh you're fine just go outside and smell a flower you're still enjoying beauty of nature in a different way um but some people are actually apparently really um weird about that they're like 
man, I don't want to go outside. I feel this way. And it's like, eh, <laughs> you're still doing it. Just go outside. You're fine. Um, I don't like outside. I'll stay inside. Thanks, though. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be outside if I wasn't sweating. If it wasn't for medication that makes me, like, prone to heat, I would be a-okay with being outside. And, I mean, it even gave, like, an option of, like, watching the waves crash on the beach. And I'm like, fucking count me in. I would literally be in the worst mood. And the moment I get to the beach, I'm like, I'm fucking happy again. Like, I, I, like, everything I was upset about is gone. Um, So keep that in mind, everyone. (laughs) Um, We're just going outside and sitting on a patio. Like, not too much. Just out there enjoying it. Um, So that's just kind of origins and kind of how you celebrate it. Um, So when you are thinking Litha, you're celebrating Litha, it's a good time to think about your intentions. So it's a good time during like the midsummer celebration. It's a good time to align yourself with the powerful energies of the sun in summertime. Solar energy is a very powerful non-ending energy. Okay, it will end at some point, but not in our lifetime. But it's a very powerful energy source. Why it might as well just use it to your attention. And everybody needs vitamin D in their life. So, like, right. hello, this is easy. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> um, so everything is growing, even ourselves, and we're like expanding to like a better person. Um, so now is the time to expand on those ideas business goals or desires or anything you want to change in your life. Hint, hint. And like all (laughs) Wheel of the Year Sabbaths, uh, Litha is an opportunity to show gratitude for all that you have and all that you have achieved this year thus far, Um, as well as thank Mother Earth for her bounty of offering and like the crops that you're getting. Um. Sorry. Um, Anyways, so again, Litha is a fire festival. So bonfires are lit and um, gathered around by friends and family um, and communities if there's a big enough festival or big enough, I guess, culture for it. Um, And some of those cultures will, again, believe that it's like a portal ending one airy area to another kind of thing i'm honestly surprised some people don't believe that it's like the new year kind of thing you know right yeah i mean like how they it's not winter solstice that they do this but something similar to it you know um so not only is jumping over a fire considered good luck and changing from like that's in the past looking to the few uh the future kind of thing it's also symbolizes cleansing so shit happened in the last half of the year that you're like man that sucked like i don't want that to happen again jump over fire and it symbolizes being cleansed on this day obviously don't just jump over fire because that's not gonna fucking work you gotta do it on a certain day um uh but yeah so you gotta jump over a fire and release that negative energy that uh was obtained during the first half of the wheel um and do it before the wheel turns again basically so um some symbols there's actually a lot of symbols when it when people talk about litha um from colors foods herbs stones um actual symbols uh flowers and plants deities and animals um so some colors blue green yellow pink purple um so when you see these colors out in nature just realize that it's like a gift um for litha um as seen in the sky woods and in flowers there's plenty of those colors around you if you just truly look for it um and when i think of like blue green yellow and pink i think of very summery like i think summer i don't i i I, when i think of blue and green yeah when i think of blue and green and yellow i think of like as a child going outside to play like a play set in the like dead of heat and having fun and like just clear skies that that's all I can think of. It's like a core memory. (laughs) Um, uh, Some foods to have or celebrate with um, on Litha 
are honey, elderberry, which elderberry makes a great jam. So get you some toast and jam. <laughs> um, you can actually get the seeds, not the seeds, but like dried versions of elderberry basically. And you can make a tea out of it. And it's so fucking good. Um, there's this place that I went to. Um, it's a little shop just north of me. Uh, and they actually have a ton of herbs. Like there's like three st- or four stacks. Like, so there's um, one shelf. And then on each one of those, there's like four canisters. So there's two in front, two behind and just lying down the thing. There's three shelves just like that. So there's a lot of herbs from, and I was overwhelmed. I was sitting there staring. <laughs> My friend's like, I need an ounce of this two and a half ounces of that one. Um, give me this. And I'm sitting there like, uh, uh, what do I need? What uh, do I need any of this? Like what, what, what? what? So I was very overwhelmed. I was very like, (laughs) Ooh, they actually have, um, like witch hazel there. And the lady there was actually telling me about how she like makes her own like witch hazel, like stuff for her face to help with her eczema. And then she also makes rose water. And I was like, that's fucking cool. And I was like, so you can ingest these? And she's like, yeah, you can, like, if you can't ingest it, it clearly states do not ingest this. And there's only, like, two items on the entire wall that you can't ingest. I was like, cool, because last time I bought rose petals, um, I wasn't allowed to ingest them because it's seen for um, religious purposes only. And I was like, can I not ingest them because they're bad? Like, they're laced with something? <laughs> or, or what? <laughs> or is that just... I can't do it because it's for religious purposes only. Like what? Um, Hmm. So they were like dyed or something too. Like, yeah, I don't know. But it's cool though because you can get roses there, like dried roses. You can get red and pink, and you can also get like the rosebud, like a stem kind of thing on it. Um, So that was pretty cool. I got me some pink uh, red roses. That comes in (laughs) handy a little later. Um, So some foods, honey. Elderberry, strawberry, fennel, which fennel and strawberry are actually pretty good together. I don't know why it is, but it's it's kind of it reminds me of like strawberry rhubarb. Mm. It's like this weird taste, but it's good. Um, <laughs> thyme, <laughs> thyme, fresh greens, mead, and light wines. I actually tried a apple mead. I think it was and that was pretty good. I didn't eat it because like Will doesn't really drink. If he drinks, it's going to be, like, one drink, and that's it. And I, like, feel weird about drinking too much around him. So, like, I just yeah. try not to drink as much. I just drink socially. Now, if I'm with somebody who drinks a lot, like, then I'm going to, like, go hard. But <laughs> I, socially, I'm a social drinker. I got to drink with yeah. people, or I just don't want to drink at all. Um. So... And actually, you can order meat online. I think there's like a website or something like that Will got them from. It's like how Vikings used to make meat in like the old days. So that was pretty cool. Um, some herbs that, herbs and flowers, I should say, and plants that are commonly associated with Lepa are rose, St. John's wort, mugwort, plantain, lamb's crust, nettle, Betony, chamomile, thyme, fennel, sage, mints, calendula, elderflower, meadow sweet, and verbena, uh, oak, mistletoe, lavender, pine, and fern are some I- like items that are all kind of symbolizes litha. Stones are peridot. Is it peridot or peridot? I think or it's peridot? peridot? I think it's peridot. Okay. Well, whatever that one is. I'm getting that information from the TV show, Steven. So it's probably (laughs) Peridot. The characters on there are all crystal (laughs) gems and they're all named like after their gem. And there's a character named Peridot. Now I got to look it up. God damn it. (laughs) Um, Okay. So diamond, emeralds, and lapis lazuli are all stones that um you can use it's peridot (laughs) and that was a british pronunciation so and they normally do it differently (laughs) um 
So Peridot, I guess. I like Peridot. I think that's cuter. Fancier. <laughs> yeah. It's it's more whimsical. <laughs> <laughs> Think of that. Like a little girl running around. Parado. <laughs> it sounds more like French. Like a love language. Kind oh, of. yeah. Um, okay. So some symbols. Ooh, and I'm really kind of excited about this because it's kind of like the history behind it. It's like, whoa. It's kind of mind-blowing in a way. <laughs> so symbols, obviously, bonfires, sun wheels. So like the wheels, which is probably like the burning wheels of why they put them on fire because they were right. the sun. The sun. Um, sense. Yeah. Flowers and fairies. And so um, my really nice Llewellyn's Essentials um, Midsummer book here. One of the symbols included on this is equal arm crosses and swastikas. So swastikas were seen as a sign of litha. They were originally symbols used in Hindu and Scandinavian cultures. Associated with good luck and movement through the cycle of the year. They are rarely used today because of their negative connotations. Duh. Yeah. Equal arm crosses, however, also represent the four quarters of the year. The two solstices and two equinoxes and are more acceptable. Celtic crosses and Bridget's crosses are two common examples. Uh, simple equal arm crosses can be made from crossing two pieces of wood and tying them together with ribbon, yarn, or strips of willow. If you want to make one to throw into a bonfire, use oak or hazel if you can find them. If you want, you can tuck a piece of paper with a spell or a prayer written into it into the binding. So this is actually really funny <laughs> because... I did a weekend trip to Michigan with a couple of my friends. And while up there, um, we stayed at, I wouldn't, it, it was like a motel. It was, I mean, one of those like, oh, is this going to be a good place to stay kind of things? But it wasn't like, it wasn't bad. Um, but the managers, I don't know if they're the owners of the managers, but they were Hindu. And there was actually a house behind it where they lived. Um, and when we were leaving, we saw like the manager come out of his house to like walk over to like the, um, the office. And I looked down and I saw, um, a swastika literally in his front yard. And I was like, the fuck kind of place did we just say it? And I immediately was like, oh my God, like those people are horrible and terrible. And then I read this and I was like, uh, maybe oh my gosh, that's probably just part of their culture. And. So, right. so yeah, it's seen, and it's funny because I, I don't remember when we went, but it, it was sometime in the summer. Um, but yeah, it, it's a uh, good luck in movement through the cycle of the year. So it's a good luck symbol. Right. Thanks Hitler. Yeah. Fucked right. it up. Like fuck, take something nice and mess you fuck it, it up. up. Right. Anyway, so that that was my historical fun fact. Because then you're just like, where the fuck did he get it? Like, now I want to know. Hey. Where, where did you get this symbol? Why did you use this symbol of all symbols? Why did you use this one? Why couldn't you have just use like, a I'm fucking have hand? look that up later. Yeah, you look it up. Oh, so yeah. So there's that. Um, some deities. So for those of you who work with deities, um, you might actually work with a few of these. Um, I actually just made a new friend from work, and she works with deities. Um, so she will be excited to hear this part. So Aphrodite, a start or a starty, don't know. I <laughs> didn't plan ahead when it comes to pronunciation. Freya, Ishtar, Helios, Lou, Holly King, uh, <laughs> uh, L-U-G-H, which makes me think it's Lou again, but that's because I'm English. Not English, but American, and we don't Lug. make sense. <laughs> Lug. <laughs> Lug or Lou. Um, well, the other one's L-L-E-W. Yeah. So, like, it's the same thing, basically. Okay, so the Maybe Lou, L-L. -L like oh, yeah. Okay, L-L-E-W, Lou, and the L-U-G-H, Lou. 
uh, Sol, Ra, Zeus, and Thor. Which kind of makes sense for a lot of these, like especially with like Zeus and Thor, because like with Zeus, all you all you see is like I feel like the sun, <laughs> like the king yeah. of the gods, kind of thing. Like, well, the lightning but, bolt, but yeah, yeah. Well, and Helios is here too, and he's like the sun. Oh, okay, god, yeah. Um, some animals that are seen as representation are bee, butterfly, a bull, cow hawk and eagles, horse, swallows, and wrens, just to name a few. Um, I guess there's more summer birds out there, um, but it didn't give me any listings. And I just, I kind of wonder if it means all summer birds. I'm not quite sure about that. Um, so ways to celebrate this. I mean, obviously a bonfire, but um, you can always, if you're like more of the art, kind and you like to do some artsy things um you can make floral wreaths for your front door i'm not really sure on how you can get floral wreaths to work especially if you make them yourself i don't know if you just need to do like like if you want to do the like og way of taking flowers with really long stems and like weaving it through maybe like kind of like how you make flower crowns they also have or, like foam Reef yeah, I was, I was gonna say, or just, just do like the foam flowers, but still, and, like poke them in. Yeah, um, and then if you make like floral wreaths for your door, you can actually add like a butterfly or a bee or like these like little symbols like for animals um in there. You can also add the specific flowers for the wreath instead of just like all flowers. You can do like the rose or elder uh, elder flowers, lavender, or in like mix with like little pine cones kind of stuff, um, just to kind of symbolize everything for um, Litha. Um, you can host a bonfire in Pollock for family and friends and do um, a mix of food that represents Litha, so bountiful harvest basically. Um, greens, strawberries, a uh, little wine, mead, all your goody stuff, kind of sweets with like honey. Um, you can gather and dry herbs to use throughout the coming year, which I think would be hella fun. But <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, so I played this game with a few friends and um, they, there's things where you have to, it's called Sons of the Forest. Um, and you're basically like a SWAT team in a way, like you're <laughs> secret, not secret agents, but you're like military grade agent people. Um, and you have to survive on this forest. And if you get hurt, there's medications you can use, or you can gather flowers and make a health potion. And I'm like, sold. So I am literally on a quest to find a specific flower that's only grown in four places the entire island that I'm stuck on, just so I can have health po or health potion plus <laughs> <laughs> or health mix plus. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm an herbalist. Fuck yeah, I'm an herbalist. And everyone around me is like gathering weapons and everything to make it. And I'm just traipsing along like flower. I'm going to pick this blueberry. Ooh, snowberry. Okay. Oh, I can't have the snowberry. It hurts me, but it still gives me some energy. Fine. <laughs> like, mushrooms. Okay, great. Here we go. Like, that's all I do. <laughs> um, I feel like it'd be a I think it'd be different so in the real world, though. Yeah. For sure. Dirty. But I think it'd be so yeah, well, yeah, definitely uh, dirty. But I think it would be so, I think it'd be so fun. But I don't have a garden and I am barely keeping my like cat plants alive, my cat grass, my cat grass and my catnip. Listen, like eight people bought me plants for my birthday. Thanks, Kara. <laughs> and you're like, I can't keep any of them alive. <laughs> I can't so far, the one that Kara got me is the only one that's still alive, and it's a cactus. So I kind of just ignore Why? it. <laughs> it's just sitting there, and I ignore it. And so far, it's still alive. No. Listen, I asked my boss. So he loves plants and outdoor gardens kind of things. He's an outdoorsy thing. His girlfriend is more of an indoor thing. Um, so I was like, listen, I have these three plants. Two are potted together. 
I bought them a special light and I'm telling you, I am so sad that my tree is dying. Like, I think it's dying. I don't know what to do. Like, I can't seem to get my plants to live. I, I have plant food. I give them plant food when I'm supposed to. I have it on my calendar. I have an app that tells me when I'm supposed to do it. I have an app that tells me when to water it. Like I have things, I, I'm doing it. I'm doing everything I can and I have a light. Right. And I was like, I have a light that symbolizes all the various things of sunlight. Like it's, I need one that's 24, not 24 hour, but I need one with 12 hour of direct sunlight. And then like I have the tree that's not a lot of sunlight, a little sunlight. And then the cat grass is not, is like the same as the tree. So I have it mainly on the one and then it, the other two, it kind of gets like the sides of it. And I sent him pictures of it and he showed his girlfriend, he goes, Hey, you need to cut these, this, this, and this off because they're not coming back and they're just taking away nutrients from the rest of your tree. Um, you also need to do this, this, or this with your other thing. And I was like, okay. And he's like, and you need to water from the bottom up. So put water into oh, like your like little dishes. Yeah. Yeah. And let it like seeps up as it needs it. And I was like, okay. And then I tried to do that today and I realized that my tree, I mean, it's in a self-watering planner kind of thing. Um, but it has it has water already in it. So when I dunk it towards me or like away from me, um, one like water comes out. Yeah. But like when I pushed it away from me so I can like get the spigot down into it so I wouldn't like spill anything. And I brought it back. All the water I just put in there, like came back and landed on my carpet. And I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> and the dogs have been like lapping up a lot of water and causing a lot. And I like dumped water <laughs> and I had like, I had a towel on the floor and I was like, excellent. So I picked it up and moved it from like where I spilt water earlier and I like shoved it around my plant and I was just sitting there soaking up all the water that pops out. And he's like, you also need to um, shake it, shake it a little bit. And I was like, shake it. Why? And he goes to represent wind that's on the outside. It's a tree. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And he goes, yeah. So like, yeah, he goes to so put a fan on it, shake it up a little bit, shake it like a Polaroid picture. I don't know, do something. And I was like, okay, thanks, Josh. All right. Right? I was like, huh? <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. If my tree comes back to life because of the things you say, you are like supreme. <laughs> you and your girlfriend, like I will treasure forever. <laughs> but anyways, I would love to go collect herbs if I, you know, could keep a garden alive. I think I could keep a garden alive because it's outside and most things thrive outdoors when they don't thrive indoors because of, you know, certain elements and we get a lot of thunderstorms. So like natural nitrogen cycle in the air. It's great. We got this. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, um, take the time to meditate and give thanks to the blessings you have in your life and to the blessings you have thus far and what you want for the rest of the year. <laughs> um, it says you can create an invisibility amulet from seeds of ferns gathered on Midsummer Eve. And I wonder if that has anything to do, it didn't specify why, but I wonder if it has everything to do with fairies because the veil is the thinnest on Midsummer. So it's like protection from the fae. It might. Hmm. I don't know. I was walking, not walking. I was driving to this little occult store with my friend before we went to the beach. And I was like, I know you haven't read Akatar, and I know it's on your list of things to read, but there is an episode where I straight up say, I'm that dumb bitch that will walk straight into a fairy circle. <laughs> yes, you are. And she's like, she's like, I would never do that. I used to fear them, but now I respect them. And I was like, no, I hate this world so much. Like, fucking carry me, carry me away. You could take my limbs. You could take my, like, everything. But you know what? That's such a way to go. <laughs> what what an adventure. What happened to the Children of the Blessed with Braddock and... Dad you know what happened to Pharaoh? <laughs> She's living life as a fae. She's one in a million. <laughs> <laughs> listen i'm not as annoying as the children of the blessed but i can be just as annoying as pharah so i think there's a little Oof. bit of a like i think 
I think I could do it. I think I could survive. I could be like, <laughs> can I bring my cat and my boyfriend with and my dogs? Can I bring all of them? You know, I don't think Tamlin would have been okay with Favor bringing her boyfriend. I don't think that would Well, Tamlin okay. can suck my dick. He, <laughs> or he can suck his own. Like, I want... I want what I have already. I just don't want to be in this this world, this realm right here. <laughs> just what what if I do walk to a fairy circle and I just get transported away and then there's just fucking Tamil sitting there and he's just like, I fucking heard everything. <laughs> You'll be like, like, send me back. Send me I'm back. like, eh, <laughs> this is not the realm I wanted. <laughs> But but not before I'd be like fuck you tampon, <laughs> running away. You're like son of a bitch. The tampon is real. Fuck. No. I'll be like bro. Is there a night court here? <laughs> He'll be like, you want to be with those people? I'll be like, no. He would. Yeah, because like, I feel. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> you piss me off. He'd be like, yo, I just want to go be with Pharaoh and Reese. <laughs> In the night court where it's fun and fancy free up there. Not in this <laughs> destitute location, man. Besides, they probably bring my boyfriend, cat, and dogs with. So, fucker. <laughs> they probably make them last forever. In the house of wind and just leave me there. Honestly. <laughs> access to the library below. <laughs> right. Just leave me And, there. like, yeah. Maybe, like, once Call a me. month, take me down to the, like, the rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be good. I'd be good. Start calling you Nesta. <laughs> yeah. Because that's basically all she wants. She just wants to be left alone. That's all I want. I just want to be left alone. I just want to, like, be able to afford my life or the life that I want. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, not I have I to. Need much. I don't need much. I would say I don't need much. And then we'll be like, that's wrong. <laughs> You're I always thinking about what me. you want, babe. If there was food and books, I could survive. I would be just fine. True. I, I, I would like for my whole family to be there. Yo. Well. And by whole family, I mean the ones that live in my house. <laughs> Brittany. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the pets. The yeah. Dog. See, that's all That's all I'm asking. Can I just like... See, and in the Fey realm, I would get a period once a year. Twice a year, actually. Twice a year. Oh, twice a year. And, and you get to call I live for it because it's that bad. And it's only a week. It's not like seven days. It's not three. It's a week. And I'm like, yeah. cool. I know it's going to be a week because I was told it's a week. Not like this stupid fucking human body. Just kidding. Your period's going to be eight days. Yeah. But it's still regular, even though it was four days last time. It's fine. Okay. Even get me Whatever. Started. And and they have tonics for pregnancy. Yeah. For men, hello, healthcare, love it. Great idea, everyone. Great idea. <laughs> and I could live forever. I could see the change of the world. I could be part of history. And I wouldn't have to worry about having kids right off the bat because I'd have time. All the time. I could build my wealth. All right, time to find a fairy circle. <laughs> Babe, we're going on a road trip. <laughs> And on that tangent. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> you could also build a fairy house in the woods to invite their goodwill into your life. See that? I'll do that first. <laughs> there you go. I'll bring them offerings and I'll bring them a fairy house so they have something to live in. And then I'll be like, I come in peace. <laughs> and we just trade someone in. <laughs> So, for future reference, we find Emily's body in the forest. Um, <laughs> she was I trying to find the would. fairies. And I fucking got caught, and I probably died because they, <laughs> I didn't find the fairies. And I just walked around the woods aimlessly and just died. <laughs> That's what I attacked by a wild animal. Hey, Tamon. man. He's like, I'm pissed off. Another human bitch. Ugh. <laughs> oh my god. I'll I'll be wearing this t-shirt the time I do it. <laughs> He'd be like, Ugh, the city of starlight. Ugh. 
be like, and take me there. Immediately demolish you. <laughs> Slice me to ribbons. Right. While he barked. <laughs> Rawr. <laughs> I can just imagine my face being ribbons, just like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not this again. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking tampon. The people that haven't listened to those episodes are like, what is happening? Just read Akatar, man. <laughs> you don't even have to listen to our episodes, but you'll understand. <laughs> oh, anyways. I'm like smiling. My cheeks hurt. I'm smiling too much. <laughs> the serotonin is too good. Um, <clears throat> uh, okay. So other things you can do if you don't want to do any of the above. Uh, you can sip an iced herbal tea and relax. Realizing all that is meant to thrive does so that the everlasting nutrients. What? Nutrients. Yeah. Yeah, I said that right the first time. Okay. Of our beloved star, the sun. You can gather in ritual, song, and dance. You can write a song, an ode, or sing. Uh, write or sing an ode to the sun. Uh, you can light a bonfire and toss aromatic uh, herbs as an offering, like thyme, verbena, mint, sage, and or mugwort. You can practice your storytelling. You can watch the solstice sunrise and sunset. You can meditate um, and think of the roots of the plants of Litha ground you into the ground and fill you with grace and abundance. You can gather the ash from your solstice bonfire and spread it in your garden to enhance fertilization and increase yield. Ooh, that'd be good. Um, you can participate in a ceremony at a stone circle, monolith, or a sacred well, which actually there is a story about that in this book, too. So sacred wells were found all across Europe and in some other countries as um, as well. And people made pilgrimage to the sacred wells on midsummers uh, on midsummer for healing and blessing. Um, and these wells were only visited on a solstice or rather special days. Uh, most of these sites are gone now, and a few remain. Um, and if you live near one or are visiting an area, there is one, and it might be worth a trip on Midsummer. Um, these wells are sometimes considered to be places of transition between our world and another, or symbolic of the womb of the earth and or a mother goddess. Oh, found a different fairy circle. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So, you can go to a sacred well, apparently. Um, and one I'm actually really excited about trying because I love honey. I fucking love honey and I am growing to like rose petals. I don't really like the scent of rose. I'm also not like a very flowery kind of person. I'm very fruit based, like sweet fruit, unless it's hibiscus or like a, like a sweet f flower scent, I guess. I, yeah. Or like eucalyptus and like mint those kind of things i'm okay with but like flowers i'm not really a fan of and roses i'm definitely not a fan of um but i am growing to like it for its health properties and flavor not anything else scent wise um however because june is uh sometimes considered the pollinator month i think just because that's when most of the bees are doing its job um, plus, Midsummer has the symbol of bee. Uh, you can actually try infusing honey with various garden uh, herbs, uh, more specifically like sage and rose. Uh, well, this, you can do any of them, uh, but this recipe calls for sage and rose. Um, so honey's ability to preserve the potency of an herb is hard um, to, you know, not do because of like how well it is. And can you just think about it? Like, sage honey on chicken like <laughs> just sounds so good um much gratitude and honor are due to nature's true herbalist the honeybees uh this remedy will provide a potent dose of vitamin c and the sweetness of midsummer by the spoonful um so it's best to take raw local honey because if you get any from the store it's just a lot of sweetener to be honest with you um 
And it's really nice that you're helping local people because they're probably doing more to sustain honeybees than mass markets are doing. Um, so go to your local farm. A lot of them actually have it and they're pretty cheap. They're honestly a lot cheaper and you can get a lot more for uh, like the quality. And you're also and helping sustain your allergies and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Cause shit and like everything else, I don't know what it is, but I get so nasally and gross <clears throat> when I do store bought honey. Like I put it in my fucking tea to help a cold and it's not doing anything. But yeah. the moment I did the um other honey, the one that's actually from a farm, not mass produced. I was like, this is fucking amazing. And it's like, it's not like stick to your teeth, like sugar. I have a cavity sweet. It's like, I just ate an apple and that was sweet kind of thing. Um, so you're going to take uh, local honey. You're going to take dried rose petals and dried sage, preferably garden sage, but you can just get like dried sage from like an herbalist or get your own sage from the store, whatever you want. Um, and then you're going to put, um, you're going to take a mason jar and you're going to fill halfway to the top with the herbs. Um, you're also going to pour the raw honey on top, pushing the herbs down um, with something like a chopstick or something that's not going to like grip as much to the um, honey around you. Um, but you're gonna po you're gonna push all the herbs down so that the whole amount of honey gets infused with all the herbs that you put in there. Um, you're going to seal it and set it in a sunny window, uh, and you're going to turn over once daily. Once daily. So I, I when I hear turn over, I don't know if it literally means turn over, or like turn, <laughs> like right. turn around. Turn um, over to me would be flip like onto the top, but I don't know. Right. Well, and I mean, maybe that's a good way to get like all the sage flavors up and around because it's kind of yeah. like moving everything up. Um, but you're going to turn over once daily. Um, you are going to fill with more honey as needed because herbs tend to absorb the honey and you will want to keep them covered. So if they're starting to stick out, then you need to add more. Um, you're going to strain after one to four weeks, depending on um, like where the taste level is. Like if you want it more stronger, then obviously let it sit for a little bit longer. Um, but you will want to either keep it in the sun or infuse it daily with love and gratitude for the sun because if it wasn't for the sun, like you wouldn't be having this shit right here. So, um, and you could probably use it in like a, in a spoonful, just like on its own or like in tea or even on like food. And it, um, I guess it's going to be good for your uh, everything because of the vitamin C in it. So I like it. Yeah, <laughs> that's just one of the many uh, recipes you can follow. Uh, now you can go ahead and get anything online. Um, but just remember that things online are not always what they seem. So just be careful with that. But yeah. That's it with all I, that's all I have for Litha. I love it. That's exciting. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a good one. And I think Litha this year is um, the 21st. I think that's what I saw, June 21st. Yeah, so it's next Wednesday. Um, so... Get your shit together if you want to celebrate midsummer appropriately. Get your shit together. Oh, wait. Is it the 24th? No. I just read that it's possibly the 24th. That's stupid. No. It's celebrated on or around June 21st. Yeah, that's what I saw. Okay, whatever. According to this, so like in almost all of these um, books, it'll actually have like a wheel of the year for the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. So like depending on the year. So like right now, the southern hemisphere is celebrating Yule. So like they're celebrating Christmas, essentially. Um, yeah, it's it's funny to think about that because like, you know, 
we're as humans just naturally self-centered so like you don't think about the fact that in different parts of the world things are totally different like yeah um but it's next uh it's next wednesday june 21st for the northern hemisphere so if you celebrate it be ready um just another quick like business kind of thing i guess little little um plug for lack of a better term um, coming soon to the mystery of life podcast blog will be our next installment which is all about divination tools so check that out there some pretty interesting stuff and if you have any questions or want any more details you can either get the book that i reference in the in the blog post or feel free to reach out to us at our email a quarter which is at gmail.com yep i don't have anything else i think that's cool it. nice all right until <laughs> next time bye